Political witch hunt, they screamed. Political witch hunt, Republicans yelled. Day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute. Nothing but a political witch hunt. A Democratic, right? A Democratic local DA in New York City, right? A partisan political witch hunt indicting Donald Trump outrageous. Everybody screamed. Every Republican screamed from Marjorie Taylor Greene to Jim Jordan to Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Jeb Bush. <laughs> Jeb freaking Bush, right? Uh, who Donald Trump probably over the course of the last seven to eight years has never said anything nice about, has insulted. I don't know that Trump has insulted a family more than he's insulted the Bush family. And here's Jeb Bush. Here's Jeb Bush just the other day calling what Alvin Bragg, the, these, these New York City indictments against Donald Trump. Uh, there's Jeb Bush calling it all an outrageous political witch hunt. Here's the deal. And, and let's get some perspective. Let's not get so caught up uh, in these New York, in this New York City indictment, 30 some charges against Donald Trump for business fraud, uh, partisan political witch hunt. Let's not get so caught up in this indictment and not understand that this could be the beginning of a year of two to three more indictments for Donald Trump. Look, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know the first thing about uh, this New York indictment against Trump. Uh, you're listening to me right now today on a Monday. Uh, Trump's going to be arraigned tomorrow, Tuesday, right? Nobody knows what the charges are. Isn't that the damnedest thing, right? Every Republican calling this a political witch hunt hasn't even seen the charges yet. They don't even know what the indictment is. Nobody knows what this indictment is. Nothing to see here, said one Republican who hasn't even seen the charges yet. And we'll see them tomorrow. And I'll be honest, because I can only be honest, so Trump's committed business fraud. Hold them accountable. I think Donald Trump has probably committed business fraud his whole entire life. Hold them accountable. Nobody's above the law. I, make, make no mistake. Nobody's above the law. I get that. Hold them accountable. But I got to be honest, these, these business fraud charges against Donald Trump don't exactly get me excited. Uh, don't exactly fire me up. To be honest, because Donald Trump is somebody who led and incited a violent attempt to overthrow an American election. Damn it, I want Trump indicted for that. Donald Trump, somebody who purposely, I mean purposely stole classified documents and then purposely hid those classified documents and then purposely obstructed the investigation into and the retaining of those classified documents. I want Donald Trump indicted for that. Donald Trump purposely pressured Georgia's election officials to overturn Georgia's election results. Damn it, I want Trump indicted for that. You see, there are more important, much bigger, more important charges, potential charges and indictments coming down the path here, coming down the pike here. And I, I look, I want Trump held accountable for every misdemeanor, for every felony he's committed. Please understand me. I will find out tomorrow what these charges are. And if these charges are bogus and there's nothing there, this is going to boomerang back on Democrats. If it is just, if this is just a Democratic prosecutor, right, hell bent on going after Donald Trump, let me tell you something, Democrats, that's going to totally boomerang and backfire on the Democratic Party. And that will strengthen Trump, not only within the Republican primary, within the Republican Party, it'll strengthen Trump nationwide.
If, be clear, if there's nothing there, there in the in this New York indictment, if there's nothing there, and this is just a partisan political witch hunt, this will help Donald Trump. This will help put Donald Trump back in the White House. That's why I don't believe Democrats would be that stupid. I don't believe this Democratic prosecutor, Alvin Bragg in New York City, would be that stupid to do it. But we don't know. Here's the bigger, broader point. Republicans don't know either. Every single Republican screaming political witch hunt right now has no idea what these charges are. But I find this other aspect much more interesting. So these Republicans, and it's easy to do because Alvin Bragg is a partisan Democratic prosecutor. It's easy to make the case that this is a Democratic partisan witch hunt against Alvin Bragg. But think about this. When Trump is indicted for pressuring Georgia election officials to overthrow Georgia's election results, think about this. Republicans will yell, political witch hunt too. And when Trump is indicted for inciting January 6th, inciting a violent attempt to overthrow an American election, Republicans are going to yell and scream and howl political witch hunt as well. But it's going to be a hell of a lot more difficult to make that case with those more serious charges. It's easy to scream partisan political witch hunt against a Democratic prosecutor in New York City for bringing forth potential business fraud charges against Trump. But pressuring Georgia to overthrow their election results, trying to, trying to uh, uh, lead a violent attempt to overthrow an American election, it's a hell of a lot more difficult. I mean, they can scream, Republicans will scream political witch hunt, but man, oh man, there are going to be Republicans and there are going to be plenty of Americans who won't buy it then. There are, in fact, most Republicans believe that this New York indictment is, in fact, a political witch hunt. But that's going to be a tougher case to sell. That's going to be a tougher case to make when the Georgia indictment happens and when the January 6th indictment happens. Political witch hunt? When Trump tried to overthrow an American election? It's not going to work. Uh, and, and you all need to know, we all need to know, that it's so easy to get caught up in that which is right in front of us right now. But I'm telling you why. Uh, in front of us three months from now could be another indictment or two dealing with, when it comes to our democracy, uh, much more serious charges. We won't even be talking about or thinking about this New York indictment. And it's going to be much more difficult to make the case to the American people that this is some political witch hunt when it comes to what Trump did attacking our very democracy. Look, Republicans are fucked. Pardon my language, but Republicans are fucked. They're going to have to spend the next two years defending criminal behavior. Think about that for a minute. They have to defend their dear leader, their cult leader. Their dear leader, their cult leader is a criminal. Their dear leader, their cult leader right now is on track to get the Republican Party nomination. And I personally believe no matter how many times Trump is indicted over the course of the next couple of years, Trump's going to be the Republican Party nominee. But the Republicans are going to spend the next two years having to defend criminal behavior. That must just suck. I mean suck. You know, it's hard. 
I've said this before. It's really hard to be politically homeless. When I left the Republican Party, I became politically homeless. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm just kind of hanging out here. And it's not easy. It, it's, it's not easy. But man, oh man, uh, if, if the alternative would be that right now, if I were still a Republican, I'd have to be out there right now, like all these other Republicans, um, defending Trump's criminal behavior. No, ma making the case, making the case that Republicans are making that Donald Trump is above the law. If I were out there having to do that, no way, no way I'd, I'd, I'd take political homelessness any day of the week. Republicans are going to have to spend the next two years defending criminal behavior, period, because their leader is a criminal, period, and he's going to be invite, indicted two to three more times, period. And Republicans did this to themselves. I, I guarantee you, privately, Republicans don't want to have to do this. DeSantis and Pence and Pompeo and Kevin McCarthy, uh, none of them want to have to go out there in front of the cameras and say political witch hunt. None of them want to have to do that. None of them want to have to be on the record defending Trump's political beh uh, uh, criminal behavior. Some of the crazies do, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Jim Jordan, but most of these Republicans don't. The Republicans who are running against Trump or want to run against Trump, man, they don't want to have to be out there defending criminal behavior, but they have to and they will because they want to stay in the Republican Party and or they want to get the Republican Party nomination. But privately, they don't want to have to do that. Privately, they wish Trump were gone. But they have to do it. They have to do it to stay viable. But do not for a moment feel sorry for any of these Republicans because they did this to themselves. They did this because for seven to eight years, Republicans have never held Donald Trump accountable. For seven to eight years, Republicans have never called Trump out. For seven to eight years, Republicans have never taken Trump on. They created this monster, and now they're stuck with him. They're stuck with him. He's on track to be their nominee. Cracks me up, makes me smile, I'm not gonna lie. They did this to themselves. He'll probably be their nominee. And because of that, because they created this monster, Republicans these next two years cannot and will not talk about health care or border policy or what to do with Ukraine, how to help Ukraine or tax policy or what to do about the debt or what to do about Social Security. Republicans can't and won't talk about any of that over the next two years because all they're going to have time to do, all they're going to be able to do is defend Trump's criminal behavior. Now, that must suck. It can't be fun. But fuck it. They did this to themselves. They deserve every last moment of this. And all the rest of us, all the rest of us who are not Republicans and will not have to spend the next two years defending criminal behavior, we've got one job. Let's make sure we beat them in 2024. Let's make sure we defeat um, this criminal and his cultish enabling group of followers, the entire party. Our only job is to defeat them. Our only job again in 2024 is all the rest of us come together, lock arms, put our policy differences aside and defeat this 
criminal supporting cult. Because that's what my former political party has become. I'm Joe Walsh. This is White Flag with Joe Walsh. Thanks so much for listening. Um, uh, 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 make sure you got to get all this right. Uh, my YouTube channel, White Flag with Joe Walsh, to watch uh, the entire videos of all of these episodes. Um, uh, uh, check out my podcast, White Flag with Joe Walsh, where ever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, anywhere. Follow me on Twitter at Walsh Freedom. A lot of crazy stuff going on with Twitter right now. Follow me at Walsh Freedom. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram. I'm everywhere. Uh, keep the faith. Uh, I wish you all a great week. Lots to talk about this week. And as always, be brave out there.